This is Modern Homesteading. So with four days to go before we leave for Montana for our crosscut saw class, my uh, crosscut saw Wanda, who's named after my grandmother from whence it came, uh, needs a traveling case, a hard case that will protect uh, her teeth uh, as we travel to Montana. So today, that's what we're gonna build. Albeit a fire hose makes a fantastic case for a saw in the field, it's not suitable uh, for traveling or if need be to be on horseback. So a hard case is a proper case. The Forest Service has been their experience that the majority of the injuries incurred by sawyers using crosscut saws are in the sheathing process, sheathing and unsheathing. So they have developed a way of uh, donning and doffing uh, the sheath uh, by simply rolling it along the teeth off and repeating this process to install it. So the best practice for storing your sheath uh, when you're done is if you're using ropes like I do to secure it to the saw is to take your ropes and simply tie them around. This will keep it rolled up and this will keep everything in one place because I can attest to you that uh, these things like to get lost out in the field. So. Tie these up, we got a nice compact unit, we can put that in the truck, everything's going to stay together and be there when we need it. So I've taken the sheet of plywood and ripped it down to uh, four widths, ten and a half inches wide, and now we'll use our compass here and we'll trace around the saw an inch and a half over on all sides. Now with a bandsaw, or you could use a jigsaw, I've cut this plywood to be an exact match of Wanda, uh, an inch and a half overcut on all sides exactly. So now I'm going to trace her exact dimensions on the plywood. To get the radius correct on the T side, I'm going to use a flexible stainless steel scale and press it firmly along to get the correct radius up tight against the teeth. Beautiful, perfect fit. So you're asking, what's the point of the recess? Uh, the point of the recess is that, uh, so we don't knock the set out of the teeth. These teeth, when it's, prop when it's properly sharpened, will be set at an angle. Both of them will stick out a little bit. And if we were to sandwich this between two pieces of plywood, then we would run the risk of pressing or, or changing that set, ruining that set on the teeth, when we definitely don't want that. So having this, this um, recess in here where the blade actually sits just a 32nd of an inch or so below the top of the plywood, when we put the covering piece on here, it will protect it. It will not uh, uh, press that set out of the teeth. So nice clean way to do it. Uh, you could do this if you don't have a router with a chisel. It'd take a little while, but you could definitely do it. But whether you do it this way or use a spacer uh, when you're building your saw sheath, make sure you don't just mash it together because uh, that's uh, it's not, not the correct way. So the router is definitely a good start, but I definitely want to take a minute 
and knock off those high spots with a good sharp chisel. That's nice. Properly done. Cut a little uh, circle right there so I can, because it fits so tight in here, I can get my finger in there and pop that out and get her out, but a nice tight fit. You can see my side to side movement there. Little tiny bit. I don't, I don't want that flopping around in there. Not that it's going to, but we'll, uh, once we uh, bolt it all together, I'll be sure and put two uh, screws through here with wing nuts uh, to hold that secure so it won't move at all. It'll be uh, immovable. Back in Granddad's bolt box, so I've got some uh, nice carriage bolts here. I found two, hopefully I can find two more. And some wing nuts. And let's uh, start putting this together and get the final pieces cut out. Now we'll flip over the first side of our sheath and lay it on our other strip, matching these two butt ends here. And then using our first holes that we drilled as templates, we'll drill through to the other side. Now remember, when you're drilling through wood, if you don't uh, go into wood in the back, you know, if you don't support that, then you'll get what they call tear out as a drill bit comes through and it'll tear a big unsightly piece out. So to prevent that, when you're drilling, if you can drill through and into another piece of wood, uh, that'll make your life a lot better. So with our two pieces bolted together here with the wing nuts, now remember, we overcut this an inch and a half bigger than the actual size of the saw. So I'm going to uh, take my compass here and I'm going to go trace all the way around this and we're going to take a quarter of that inch of that off. So I've me measured this to a quarter inch. And why am I doing this? Trying to cut these two pieces when we have these complex angles, these radiuses here together like th so that they'll match if we cut them individually, it'll never happen. So this way, we'll trace this out and cut this on the bandsaw with these two hooked together and then we'll have perfectly matching sides. Hi Jack. So I got both pieces cut here. Perfect match, I cut them together. And of course the carriage bolts uh, that hold everything together go through the, the handle holes, two at the waist. Tight fit, nice. proper saw case for a proper saw. Turned out good. Very minimalist. Lightweight, not too heavy to carry out in the field, but safe. I can put it in the cab uh, without worrying about coming in contact with the teeth and just it is a load off. I always worry about these, especially this saw, so it's nice to have it safely protected. That's it for the crosscut saw sheath. So what does the W stand for? Is it Wanda or Wrangler Star? Hmm, one of the incredible mysteries. So, if you guys have in your family uh, one of these vintage crosscut saws, drop whatever you're doing and make sure you get it. Uh, even if you're not restoring it yet, but set it aside because they are a national treasure and they're irreplaceable. Uh, they will never be produced again. And once they're gone, they are gone. Many of you have shared uh, pictures and photos and stories with me uh, of your own family saws with rich heritage and, and a lot of history um, that you have uh, gotten from grandmothers or grandfathers or aunts or uncles and, and do that. Ask around. Um, you may have family members that have one that you're not even aware of. So if you're interested in vintage crosscut saws, um, I have uh, some restoration videos right here to the right.
right, left, to the left, my right, your left. Uh, you can watch uh, Restoring uh, My Family uh, Crosscut Saw, uh, which I've uh, named Wanda. So you can click on those. So again, uh, I remind you, because we all need reminders to click the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And what else? Is that it? No, oh, that's it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.